Hi everyone, this is Mike at Brash Monkey, and this quick tip tutorial is going to show you the basics of having custom easing curves for multiple objects. Now the most important thing to understand about custom easing curves in Spriter is that they always go only from the keyframe that you set to use a custom easing curve to the next keyframe, either in the main timeline if you set the curve there, or to the next keyframe for that specific object. So as an example, let me just scroll along in the timeline here and let's say we move this first menu option, maybe I'll do it here, we move this first menu option onto the screen like so. Okay, so we've got this animation that simply starts here. Let's consider that off screen and this darker gray rectangle is the screen. So the menu option scrolls onto the screen. And by default, when you create an animation, or I should say move an object in a new keyframe, what you end up with is tweening from that first keyframe to the second keyframe in what's considered a linear speed curve, which means there's no easing in, there's no easing out. That's the default. So you can see if I left click, you see a straight diagonal line that represents a um, linear easing curve or linear tweening. So let's say you want to have a custom ease out when this scrolls on, meaning it's going to come in at full speed, but then slow down a bit before it stops. A common beginner's mistake would be to set the custom easing curve or speed curve up in the main timeline, especially because by default, spreader looks like this and you only see the main timeline. So it's important to know that if you, you'll see if I hover right here, that I get this little change to my mouse point, which lets me know if I click and drag upward, I can expand the timeline to reveal the timeline of each specific object. And so what you really wanna do when you have situations like this, where you want multiple objects to each potentially have their own custom speed curves that should not be disrupted or interrupted by keyframes of other objects, you need to make sure that you're setting your custom easing or speed curves on that particular object's timeline. So I'm just going to right click here on the initial uh, keyframe for this particular bone that controls that menu option and I'm going to switch it from instant to, or I should say from linear to custom. And you can see by default it's linear, but I'm going to choose one speed curve fast um, and you're going to want a shape sort of like this uh, so that it comes in fast and then slows to a stop and I'm going to apply and then you'll see if I drag through here it's moving faster here and then it's moving less and less distance uh, until it comes to a stop and if I play it you'll see that I have to turn off the looping uh, first though or it's going to look weird um, so let me play that and it's a little hard to see because it's so fast so if I want to I can just click and drag this to make it take longer that's the main line key that I did. And now you can see that uh, it comes in fast and eases to a stop. Okay, and now that that's set up properly, I'm going to save myself some time and just right click again on this uh, keyframe that has a custom curve. And I'm going to copy the easing curve so that I can paste that same curve style into my next object. So as you can see, this menu option starts right away. Let's say I want it so that when it's almost all the way out, I want the second object to start coming onto screen. So I'm going to select that object and I'm going to choose key selected. That's going to protect its current position before it starts moving. Uh, otherwise, if I had just moved it out somewhere over here, it would have started at the very beginning of the animation as well. So I key selected to make sure it stays put in its original position until that very moment. And then I'm going to scroll on ahead and we'll say to about here, which is roughly the same distance as here. Uh, I could be more scientific if I want, but this is just for demonstration sake. And now I'm going to take this and put it here. There we go. And one more thing, I just noticed I accidentally created a key uh, frame for every object, including that bone uh, when I had it selected here, when I chose, when I turned off the looping. So that's going to also interrupt the uh, movement. As you can see, it's the second menu option is not moving because of that keyframe um, until it gets all the way to this keyframe. So I'm going to just select that keyframe and delete it. And if I want to, I can check 
which object that other uh, menu option is, which should have a keyframe there, uh, and then I can delete everything else so that there's no unnecessary keyframes anywhere, like so. So there you go, now that's working properly, and it comes to a stop, so all I have to do now, make sure I have this bone selected, so it's highlighted here in orange, I can see which one it is, and now I can right click here and choose paste ease and curve and it puts the same exact ease and curve curve type that I put in for the uh, initial menu, op uh, menu option as well. So now if I play, you'll see they both come in and they both have an ease and curve to sort of ease out when they're done moving and they do not interfere with each other. So again, just make sure if you have multiple objects you want to have independent and different easing curves, make sure you don't put any curves at all. You keep every keyframe that's going to end up being created in the main line key, main line key, excuse me. Uh, you keep it as its default linear. That way the main line keyframes will never interfere with the easing of any particular object. And now to quickly just demonstrate what would have happened if you tried putting the first easing curve for your first object in the main line uh, timeline up here. Uh, let's see what would have happened. So I'm just going to go to the very first keyframe, do Control shift c to copy that entire keyframe. Then I'm going to create a new animation, which is blank as you can see. Make sure I'm at the beginning of the timeline and press Control v That'll paste the entire frame into the uh, timeline. And before I move anything, I'm not going to forget this time, and I'm going to turn looping off. Now I'm going to scroll out here somewhere, and let's move that first menu option out here onto the screen. There we go. So now that comes out. But now we say, okay, I want this to ease out. So we would make the mistake of changing the mainline keys, first keyframes, um, uh, easing curve from linear to custom and we would add that ease out and so far everything would look perfectly fine except it's fast but we can fix that. I'll just expand the time so that we can see switch it to 2000 instead of 1000 for the uh, duration of the animation make sure stretch is applied and then apply length so now the animation takes twice as long and there you go. Okay, so everything looks fine, but now what's going to happen when we do the next menu option? So I'm going to select that bone, key selected. Okay, so that's protected there. And then it should start moving out and we'll finish, let's say, about here. So I'm going to create that keyframe for it. There we go. So even before I try to add a curve to that, um, which obviously wouldn't work if I tried to do it in the mainline key because you're going to have a bunch of overlapping keys that can't suit the easing needs for every last object all at once. So even before we do that though, we can see here we have this first easing curve we set up here. Now it's going to stop here when it's supposed to stop there. So it's easing to this and then it picks up full speed again, which is absolutely not what we wanted. Um, so yeah, and it, it's just going to get worse and worse uh, as you keep animating things, more and more mainline keyframes are going to populate, uh, which are going to break any curve that you've added. So again, it's as simple as making sure you uh, always, if you're going to do easing curves for multiple objects, or if you don't want any animating of any other object to affect the overall easing curves of your entire animation that you want to make sure that you're adding all of your curves, your custom curves to that specific object's keyframe in its timeline and then make sure you keep all of the mainline key uh, keyframes linear. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much for watching.